I've been reading all about habits lately, and with the new year, I want to share five different formulas for clear habits that I adopted as a CS major that I think made me really successful. I've also included ways for you to start small with each of these habits and build up your tolerance overall to the greater habit that I'll be talking about. Hi, I'm Laura, working as a product manager in tech, and on my channel, I like to talk about life working in tech, life as a PM, and other computer science advice. These five habits that I adopted overall really transformed my life as a student, and I hope that they can do the same for you. Whether you're just looking to add a few habits into your repertoire or looking to improve your grade in a particular class, let's get started. The first formula is that after I find myself struggling with a concept or assignment, I will go attend office hours. I came into college as a computer science major with zero background knowledge, and as a result, when it came to understanding these computer science concepts for the very first time, it honestly felt a little bit like reverse osmosis. Sometimes I felt like I was actually getting dumber when it came to understanding the harder concepts and translating them into my programming assignment. I also compared myself to a lot of people, and a lot of my classes actually people did have a decent amount of background knowledge, which only made me feel even stupider for not getting a concept. Altogether, this created a pretty volatile environment where I was afraid to reach out for help out of fear that I would look dumb or look stupid. It also wasn't tied to my own identity. I thought that I was pretty self-sufficient and also pretty self-motivated and smart, so I didn't need to reach out for help. However, I quickly realized that the more I sank silently, the worse off I would be. I tried it out once though, reaching out for help by attending office hours. It was so much easier having a TA explain the concept to me and in different ways as well, as well as giving me concrete examples in which an implementation worked. The excitement and joy of getting the assignment done early, done correctly, and also done with verification that I did it correctly was a huge, tremendous success for me. It was really important to me that I did my assignments on time and also correctly, so the overall habit of going to office hours was fueled by that joy and celebration at the end of it. I know that I would get a lot further if I worked on an assignment during office hours than if I were sitting alone in my own dorm room or own apartment. Moving forward, I actually had zero issues going to office hours and creating that as a habit. I knew the location of where office hours were hosted and it was pretty easy to get there. I knew the office hours of my favorite TAs that I enjoyed working with and talking to. And thirdly, and most importantly, is that I celebrated as a result of going to office hours. So what if you don't feel the same way and you need a little bit of extra push or help getting this habit started? The first is to just show up to office hours without any need or pressure to ask questions of the other TAs or students who are there. This at least forces you to know, hey, this is where office hours are hosted. This is what time office hours are offered. And also I'm surrounded by an environment where people actively seek help and are proactive about getting help from the TAs. The second way to start small is to get used to asking questions by asking the TA or professor a question right after class, clarifying a concept or a problem that you may have been stumped on. This is a slightly different way to frame the habit and gets you in the mindset of being willing to ask questions and show that you don't understand something fully. The third way is to simply put office hours into your calendar with the location. This way you get a context reminder that office hours are starting soon and you can see if it fits into your schedule or not. By getting these constant notifications and reminders that office hours are happening, hopefully it'll push you to go at least once. The fourth way to get started is to simply look at when office hours are hosted and see if that fits. No manual work on your end here, just loading up the page where office hours are posted and seeing if they roughly fit into your schedule. The fifth and easiest way to get started is to just simply admit that you're struggling with a homework, concept, or assignment. The key thing though is to start doing one or six of all these things as soon as you experience the feeling of being stuck or struggling. This then forces your brain to start associating these things that, hey, when I struggle, then I go to office hours. The second formula is after I finish class and sit down, I will start the homework assignment for that class. My after class routine when I was still on campus was to get out of the class and then basically post up in the engineering building until I had my next class. The way that this usually worked for me was I head over to the engineering building after my previous class, find a table, sit down, pull up my laptop, and then start the assignment right then and there. I've always been the kind of person that wants to start something early, so this habit came pretty naturally to me and I've also been practicing it for a couple of years. This formula or habit though was really helpful for me because it gave me time to digest information, start processing the requirements of the assignment, and also give me enough ample time to go to office hours if I was struggling or ask friends if I was struggling. The additional feeling of celebration and joy was also just the excitement that I got from finishing the assignment early and giving myself one or two extra days to just relax before the assignment was due. Also, it's just a pretty good feeling to know that you already have a third or half of the assignment done in just a chunk of a few hours. As with the first habit, here are a few ways you can start building your habit of starting early. First is to just simply read the assignment description itself, but no need to ever start the assignment. 
this at least primes you to get into the mood of saying, hey, this is the assignment for the class that I just finished, and here is the rough idea of what I need to do, and you can start processing that already. A second way is to simply open the assignment description, but don't do any reading or any processing of the information. Again, this is just another way to prime your environment and make sure your environment is set up for you, and that you know where to go to find the assignment description next time. Third is to note the deadline or the assignment somewhere in your planner or your calendar. This is kind of a mix of environment and a contextual thing, but by writing something down, it helps kind of stick it better into your memory. And if it's in your calendar or your planner, then you also get the visual aspect of seeing this assignment or deadline written right there and there. The fourth way to start small here is to organize a single part of your workstation or desk. If your desk is cluttered, then it's probably not a great environment for working as well. So if you can make a habit out of just tidying up your desk before you get started with working, then that can make you also more prone to focusing and feel like you're in a great spot to start working. Third formula is after I fully believe I understand a concept, I will explain this concept to a friend or classmate. Being able to teach someone else a concept or a particular piece of knowledge is a great way to demonstrate that you have full mastery over this particular topic. Tying this into teaching or explaining this to a friend or classmate, I really enjoyed studying and doing homework around other people because it was pretty easy to bounce ideas off of each other or just easily explain something if one of us is missing a concept or idea. The environment though of being in office hours was additional helpful layer. Everyone there was pretty open to receiving help and giving help as well, so whenever anyone was struggling, it was pretty easy to just volunteer and try to help someone else out. I have also enjoyed teaching in the past, and I've worked as a tutor, for example, so I would say that teaching also comes a little bit more naturally to me. However, even if you're not naturally inclined to do something like this, it can help to get out of your comfort zone, or it can also just help to start practicing these skills over and over so you get more comfortable with them. With this habit, the reward was twofold for me. I really enjoyed teaching and helping other people, and I also enjoyed celebrating the fact that I understood the concept that I was trying to explain. It gave me additional boost of confidence, whether that be for the upcoming exam, or that I finished the assignment that I had just been working on correctly in the first place. Now, more ways to start small here. The first is at least sit near friends, classmates, or colleagues when you're working on something. Again, this is just an environmental thing where it actually sets you up to be in a space with other people, not just sitting alone. The second is to rewrite out concepts or ideas for yourself and see if the explanation that you've written down actually matches the ideas in your head. This is helpful just if you're working by yourself and in a quiet area. Third is to text someone else what you know. It doesn't really matter who you text, it could be a friend, classmate, yourself, your parents, whatever it may be. Just again, another way to start explaining a concept and showing that you know it. Four is to attend office hours. Now this does tie back a little bit to the first habit, but I also mentioned that in general, people in office hours are pretty willing to receive help and it's a prime environment in which you can start trying out your skills and explaining concepts to people. Five is to reach out to classmates or a friend and find a study buddy. This way you'll have someone that you can consistently work with and explain concepts to and between each other. The fourth formula is after I read an assignment description, I will go ahead and think about how I plan on solving the problem and writing a design document up. My computer science program put a pretty good emphasis on actually designing a solution prior to implementing a solution. This ensures you that you have a rough idea of the overall scope and overall responsibility of the program, and that you're not missing anything crucial when it comes to actually diving in and implementing. I often got caught up in the small things when it came to just diving in, and I felt often really overwhelmed if I didn't have a good idea of the big picture. Having a solid design document gave me all of that and more, and also gave me a chance to put my thoughts onto paper so everything wasn't swimming up here in my head alone. Having my design written down in the first place was a pretty huge reward because it meant that I also was making progress on the assignment and I was also one step closer to finishing the assignment and implementing. It gave me a lot of confidence in what I was doing and it was also easy to explain to someone else what I was doing if I needed any help or assistance. I know that this can seem a little daunting, especially writing out a whole design document. So when you start to think about starting small, you can really start small. The first way to start small is simply just to think about the way you're going to solve this. Don't start diving in into writing code and writing functions, just have a grand map in your head of what you plan on doing. The second way to start small is to write out different parts of a design and gradually grow up to writing a whole design document over time. Start out with a program flowchart, with function headers and function signatures to see where you're going, or just a written description of what you want to do. Third is that you can make it a little bit easier for yourself in the future by creating a document and format that you enjoy using for design documents moving forward. The sooner you can lock in on a format that you enjoy doing that also doesn't take you a ton of time, 
the easier it will be for you to actually complete this habit and start getting into the habit of problem solving, designing, and thinking before you start jumping in into actually coding. The fifth and last formula I want to talk about is related to job applications. After I find a job posting that I like, I will immediately apply for that job posting and submit my resume. The internship or full-time job hunt is really, really time consuming. So the easier you can make on yourself, the more motivated you'll be to keep applying and keep applying even after rejections and ghosts roll in. You don't have to spend an exorbitant amount of time though each day, each afternoon, or each weekend applying for jobs over and over again. Instead, adopt this formula where after you find a job posting you like, open that posting, submit your resume, and then submit your overall application, and then you're good to go. This should only take you a total of two to five minutes depending on the kind of application, and it should be pretty straightforward. I honestly wish I did this more often. As a student, my general habit was to find 10 or 20 postings, click on all of them, and then apply for all of them within an hour or two hours sitting. This made the physical and mental effort a lot higher because I had so many applications to get through in one single sitting, instead of just filing them one at a time as I found them. It also doesn't require me to set up an exorbitant amount of time, so it also cuts down there in terms of effort. Finally, for ways to start small here, one is to just simply have your resume open. This gets you thinking about job applications, and when you look at your resume, you'll think, hey, I should start applying for jobs, or hey, I should spruce up my resume a little bit. Both of these will get you closer to where you want to be. The second way to start small is to open a job posting, attach your resume, but don't actually submit it. This is just to prime your brain to say, hey, after I find a job posting I like, I'm going to open it and then attach my resume. This will get you over halfway there, and then once you're already halfway there, then it's pretty easy to just finish out the application. You can practice doing this a couple of times just to build up the habit, and then celebrate after each time. Third is to create a job tracking spreadsheet. This is another environmental or contextual thing where if you have a job tracking spreadsheet, you can already see where you applied for, and you also waste less time there. Fourthly and lastly is to set a daily notification or a daily reminder to send you an email about job applications that are relevant to you. LinkedIn does a fantastic job of sending you emails every single day related to your keyword searches that you've saved notifications for. So set these up and see if you get any more motivated to apply after seeing these emails roll in every single day. Those were the five habit formulas that really transformed my life as a student and propelled me to success. The key takeaway though that I really want to focus on is that you don't have to do all these habits at the same time and you also don't have to start as big as the habits that I mentioned were. Refer back to the ways about starting small and see if you can think of your own ways to also start small. Start incorporating these slowly into your routine, celebrating and rewarding yourself when you do, and you'll quickly find a world of transformation and amazing habits out there for you. I'm also really excited for 2022 and where that brings me in this channel, so thank you all so much for your continued support. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all again next week for a brand new video. Bye!